All right, today we are going to modify Excel so that we could screen the abstracts and titles of many studies. If you're doing a systematic review and a meta-analysis, one of the first tasks that you have to uh, complete is um, making decisions on which in studies to include and exclude for your project. And this is time-consuming time and tedious, uh, but we could uh, make use of Excel to do this task. Now, let me tell you beforehand, there are nicer tools out there. Um, I myself created a package in R called Metagear that allows you to um, screen the abstracts and titles. It has a nice little GUI that does it for you. Well, basically what we're gonna do is replicate that in, in Excel. And surprisingly, it is a lot more straightforward to do than it is in R because Excel is already kind of set up in a tabular format. The, the bummer part of Excel is it's not really designed for you to read a bunch of text. And so a lot of the time we're gonna spend today is just like massaging the spreadsheet to make it look good so that you don't strain your eyes as you read all this text to make decisions on what to include and exclude. Uh, before starting, uh, this video is just part of a series where I'm trying to use Excel for research synthesis uh, practices. Uh, stuff I've done beforehand was using Excel to do a fixed effect and random effect meta-analysis. And another video where um, I bamboozle Excel to do forest plots. Uh, feel free to check those out if you're interested in using Excel for your other uh, phases in your research synth synthesis project. Um, but again, there's a lot of other options out there, including R, but I totally get it. In a pinch, sometimes Excel is all you need to get things done. And you'll see today that Excel is actually quite nice to screen the titles and abstracts of many studies. So here's the goals. One, like I said, massage the spreadsheet, make it look nice for you to read so that you don't go crazy after reading a million of <laughs> these uh, bibliographic information of so many studies. Mm -hmm. Two, create buttons, which will require a little bit, a little bit of coding in Visual Basic, nothing too scary. And then finally add functionalities to those buttons to keep track of your screening decisions. So all of this is like fairly standard stuff for abstract screeners. Mm -hmm. Basically it presents you a title and an abstract and you got little buttons that help you code whether or not to include and exclude uh, the study. Now we're gonna do that now. So I already got a, a file opened. Uh, it's uh, a file that I downloaded from Web, Web of Science. It includes the bibliographic information of a ton of studies that, I, that it identified with my search terms. I think in my case here, I searched for catnip studies and uh, and, and it gave me a hundred or so uh, potential candidates for me to screen to figure out which one of these is actually a catnip study uh, doing whatever I want it to do. Um, it doesn't really matter what the origin of this bibliographic stuff is from. The goal is for you to identify which columns has the title and which column has the abstract. That's it. That's all you need to know. And so let's do that quickly right now. I know already that Web of Science uses TI for titles and that column name for that is J. I'm gonna keep using that column name over and over again. Let's scroll to find the abstract. A, B, here we go. And that column name is A1. Okay, so these two columns contain all the um, text I need to populate the abstract screener. So now we're just gonna move all the way to the end of the spreadsheet and we're going to add two new tables uh, two new uh, columns one column will be just a unique study id for each individual study it'll make it easier for us to identify which study is which and then another column that will contain our screening decision outcomes this is what the abstract screener will populate when we click the buttons study id Screener. I'm just going to put these in bold. And then the study ID is just going to be a unique number. There we go. All right. 
So now let's start working on the interface, the thing that you're going to look at for a super long time, um, reading the titles and abstracts of stuff. And so our goal is just to make this uh, nice so you don't strain your eyes. Um, this is like a tedious process, and so you got to. it's better to make it easier for you in the long run. I'm going to zoom out a bit because abstracts tend to have a lot of text. First thing I'm going to do is remove the formatting of these columns. Make everything, uh, just get rid of all those lines. And then I'm going to pick two cells, and those two cells are going to contain the title and an abstract of each study. I'm going to just change the color of these cells to a light gray so you can see what I'm up to. All right, so now we just stretch out. We got to squeeze in a lot of text in those cells especially the abstract one. So I'm just going to go all the way down. This is just going to be one giant cell, which would include, okay, so it would include the ab the title, which I know is column J. And because my data set has a header row, we're always going to skip a cell. So pull me the title of study number one, which is row number two. And it's a retracted paper. Okay, now pull me the abstract of study number one, which is AI2. So like right now, this is not readable, right? So let's quickly format this stuff so that it's nice. So we're going to go to alignment. We're going to align the text to the left. We're going to align it to the top. And then we're going to wrap the text so everything gets squeezed into uh, that cell. And then we're going to make the text bigger to read. There we go. So not all the text was squeezed into the cell. We could quickly fix that. There we go. And I'm just going to bold the title just to differentiate, make, differentiate the two. So there we go. So we formatted our cells. This is what you're going to look at over and over again. You're going to read this. You're going to read the title. You're going to read the abstract and then make a decision on whether to include it and exclude it by pressing a button. Uh, but before that, we need to kind of iterate this process, right? We're going to cycle from the titles to abstracts from study to study. And so I'm going to create a little index here called study ID. And this is going to keep track of what study we're screening at the moment. And I'm just going to give it a number, number one, study number one, OK? So right now, we're going to modify the cells of the title and abstracts to actually present the title and abstract dynamically of study number one. Right now, we hard coded it, right? We put the number, the actual value of the cell, uh, but now we want it to um, use this number, the study ID, to populate that cell. And for that, we're going to use this function called indirect. And indirect is just a, it converts a string into a uh, value that Excel uses to identify which cell to fill in the text. And in our case, we want J, because that's the column of our titles. And to pull together a string that identifies a cell, and we're going to use this um, AND symbol, which is an abbreviation for con concatenate. Whew. All right, so we want to um, concatenate it with the study ID, right? So we're going to throw this in there. But the thing is, is that because we have the header row, the actual numerical value identifying the cells is one increment higher. So we're just going to add one to this. And so if I press Enter now, this should throw in the title of the first study. There we go. So now I'm just going to repeat the same thing again for the abstract. For the abstract column name was AI. There we go. So now as we modify this number, our study ID, the abstract and the title changes with that. So I'm going to bring it back to 1. So the 
last thing we got to do is just add two buttons and the two buttons what they're going to do is increment this value here and populate our screener column that collects all of our screening decisions it's super easy um, but here's a few things you got to do before we, we get to that stage in um, default Excel it doesn't actually provide the button to develop macros or develop visual basic tools and so we got to customize the ribbon to include the developer button right over here doesn't matter which version of Excel that's always going to be under uh, that kind of uh, grouping and under developer we now we have the list of all the things that we could add to our spreadsheet in our case we want to add a button and Excel provides two options for the buttons one is the uh, form control and one's the active X control we're just going to use the active X because it's the quickest quickest thing we could code and I'm going to add two chunky buttons um, again to make it easy for me to click and make decisions on what to include and exclude so this will be my inclusion button and this will be my exclusion button now you could you could do whatever you want you could add a third button here that's like maybe makes another decision you could add a whole bunch of buttons to help you code individual um, titles and abstracts or studies I'm just concerned about uh, making decisions on whether or not it's relevant so these are just going to be include exclude um, let's make the buttons look nice now because right now they by default you get some weird name so we're gonna go to properties and this set gives you functionality to uh, modify the colors and the size of all the buttons all we want is to modify the caption first button will be called include second button will be called exclude all right so things are starting to look look good this looks like a conventional abstract screener we got a title we got our abstract we got the include and exclude buttons now we just gotta add code some visual basic go code to these buttons to increment this value and populate the exclude column so what we're gonna do is we go to the developer um, it's already on so this means we could just start looking at the code click on the first button we're gonna go to view code and here we go so this is gonna be the script that we're gonna visual basic script that we're gonna to add to uh, each button so what's gonna happen is we're gonna click the button and what, what it's gonna do is just increment the study value and then throw in our decision in the screener column so first thing we want to do is capture this value here in the cell right and, and in visual basic the way you access the contents of cells is a function called range range.value and inside the range.value you give it the identity of the cell so in this case it's bl2 BL2. Okay, so now I is filled with the contents of this cell right here, which should be one. So the next step is to um, take that index, I, I just called it I, um, and use it to fill in our screener cell here based on our decision. When we press the button, we're making a decision and we want to fill in that cell with our decision. And so we're going to use our range dot value again and this time it's going to be um, identifying the cell that we need to populate under the screener which is BG2 but we want to do it um, dynamically based on our index and so we're going to concatenate the string again I and then because the um, we have headers again we need to increment with an additional uh, value 
just to skip ahead and jump straight to the cell that we want to fill. And then we want to in fill it with um, include. So whenever we press the button, this little cell over here is going to uh, be populated with include. Now we just have one last thing we need to add to this is that once we press the button, we want to update the study ID so that it scrolls or wrote a it switches to the following title and abstract. We'll just do that right now. Um, and so we want to um, just change the value inside the cell here of our study ID. We got it right here, range BL2. And we want to, that to include our index plus one. There we go. This is the entire Visual Basic scripting, right? We're updating our study ID, which indirectly updates the title and the abstract. And then whenever we press the button, it populates the row with our screening decisions. So I guess uh, what's left is we could just test it out, test this out. So I'm just gonna uh, zoom out a little bit. So every time I press this button here, we're gonna get screener decision, and then this text is gonna scroll. So we need to activate those buttons. For that, we release the design mode, and then right now, this button is hot. Okay, when we press it, it's gonna change the title abstract, it's gonna make our decision, and it's gonna update the study ID. So let's say, I, I hope it works. There we go. So I made the decision to include study number one. It populated it with include, and then it scrolled the new title for study number two. Do I want to include study number two? Yes. Boop. There it is. We stretched out the text here so the rows are kind of unbalanced. And so if I keep pressing this, right, it's just saying I want to include all the studies. Now the next step is to just uh, modify the exclude button to do the same thing. So we're going to go to the developer design tool and then we're going to view code of that button. And really all we're going to do is copy and paste what we already did. Shove it in that button. But instead of include, we're going to have exclude. Every time you press that button, it also should update everything else. So here's all the script you need for the two buttons. to uh, create an abstract screener. So let's uh, make these buttons hot. And then let's try to test out our exclude button. Exclude, exclude, exclude. So let's bring it back to study number one. Delete all these screening decisions. Now we're starting from study number one. Let's read it, retracted. We're going to drop it. Exploitation of newer botanicals as rice grains. Ooh, yeah, that's what I want. In include. Ooh, no. Uh, I had a typo here. Uh, design mode. Include it. Exclude, include, exclude, include. You get the idea. So let me just bring up that script again so you know what to put into your cells. There we go. So really you only need three lines of code for each button. Um, and then you need remember to modify your cells like I did. Whew. All right, well, um, this should take you no longer than like 10 minutes to uh, code up your spreadsheet. But uh, let me tell you something, it's gonna save you so much time when you're screening the abstracts. Cause now you got a nice interface, buttons to click, you could sit back, relax, read the text. You could, quick, you could massage this to make it easier for you to read. Um, uh, this is essentially what an abstract screener does in other platforms. Um, and I feel like, uh, you know, you could use this for anything if you just wanna develop a coding a classifier tool 
you could do that with this just adding buttons to Excel. All right, um, I think we uh, I achieved what I wanted to do. Um, thanks so much for watching. If you like these videos, I'm probably going to do more of these uh, spreadsheet synthesis videos. Uh, I don't know what else to do in terms of like uh, ideas. Uh, feel free to comment. If you got any ideas, just put them in the comment section. I'll figure it out. Um, and then maybe I'll create a video. I'll see what I could do. All right. Well, good luck on your spreadsheet synthesis projects. Um, take it easy.